Welcome back. It is Sunday, July 2nd, and our three favorite picks are on the way. You know who it is. It's Austin, but of course, my trusty co-anchor, Logan, is here. Let's recap yesterday. What feels like we can't get the sweep, but we will happily take a two-on-one day. Let's talk about how we went two-on-one. We had the Mets minus a half in the first five. Shout out to Justin Verlander, and shout out to the offense for stepping up. They easily get that done. I think they won the first five, four-zero, full game, four-to-one. Logan, your quick call was sweat free. Mackenzie Gore over two and a half earned runs. The Phillies pivot. Did the Phillies get uh, over over for four and a half? I, I think they I think they got a little bit over that. I think they scored 19 runs. And the Angels team total over four and a half with our one loser of the day. But like I said, a fourth straight winning day. I know we can't get that sweep, but we're going to get that sweep for you guys. We're going to do it. It's been four straight two and one days, but you can't complain about profit if you're playing them just with one unit like we normally tell you guys to do it. But without further ado, let's dive in. Hopefully you guys have a great Sunday. First off, I do want to talk about on bet365 there's a great offer out there for you guys to get 200 worth of bonus bets and it's super easy to do here's how you do it sign up top link in the description deposit ten dollars make a one dollar money line bet on any game today any mlb team today it doesn't matter if they win or lose you're getting those 200 worth of bonus bets available in new jersey ohio virginia colorado and now iowa if you are in iowa bet365 just launched there about a month or two ago so take advantage of that but enough talking about some sports book sign up bonuses let's dive into the picks and i'm going to go to one that i'm actually very confident in. i'm just not going to put you know any more than one unit on but i think it's a pretty good one and let's talk about this one that i'm going to rock with it's going to be the pirates and brewers and take the under in this one oops switch to the wrong screen we're taking the under at nine runs which is currently minus 105 on FanDuel. now you look at this game it's a rubber match obviously where this is you know each team has won two games in this or one game a piece in this series and this is going to decide you know who takes away the series and while you know this doesn't really matter you know full season who wins this series it's not like it's going to make or break the brewers or the pirate season obviously both teams would love to you know say hey we got to win under a belt for the series but why am i taking the under this going because if you look at the final score so far the series you've seen an eight to seven final score and then yesterday, 11 to 8, despite, I believe, Corbin Burns almost throwing a perfect game into like the sixth inning, and the Pirates just poured it on in that at the end of that game, making the, making the final score look a lot closer than it actually was. But you're seeing two games where they went, you know, score 15 and then 19 runs. Why am I taking the under? And here's why. Now, let's talk a little bit psychological. We don't normally put out a bunch of stats, but I want to talk about the psychological aspect of this game. You're back. What the heck are you talking about, Austin? Well, let's talk about the Pirates. They're coming off their – this is their final home game. They've had a bunch in a row, and they're going to go on the road, seven consecutive road games until the All-Star break. So they got family. They got friends. They've probably got a lot more on their mind than just a baseball game today, given they're probably going to have to travel later on tonight. And so maybe they come in here, lazy bats. Maybe they just come in swinging at the first or second pitch, just trying to put the ball in play, trying to get out of this game, make this game over as early as possible. Look, they got other things on their mind. That wouldn't surprise anyone at all. Now, on the other side, you get the Brewers are playing their 10th and final game of this 10 game road trip before they go back home to play seven straight. So at the end of the day, this Brewers team could be like, dude, we're tired of being on the road. Let's go back home, see our family, see our friends friends and you know at least he's able to sleep in our own bed would it surprise anyone if either of these two teams given the circumstances come out here and just swing lazy bats try to get this game over with and when you're swinging lazy bats normally you don't see a lot of runs scored but i'm not just saying hey just bet the under blindly just because of that i also want to look at the pitchers and we're going to talk about colin colin ray who's going to start for the brewers now he's has a 4.57 era and a 1.22 whip he does have a, li a little lower expected era sitting at 4.14 so you know, they do expect a little bit of a you know a regression to come his way and he's had coming actually coming off one of his best starts of the year six and a third one earned run versus the mets now the stats and the eye test are going to tell you Ray's is an average pitcher. I'm not going to come out here and say he's going to throw another six inning pitch and give up only one earned run. Could give up four earned runs. He's going to have, you know, those those cyclical starts where some starts are good, some are bad. And with an over under at nine, we have the ability where if Ray comes out here and doesn't pitch, you know, an A game, we're okay with it. The problem is it can't be an F game. We need like a C to maybe D. We need like a C or, you know, B kind of start. We don't need, you know, him to throw a master class. We just need an okay start. If he throws an A plus start, looking in a pretty good spot but if we can get at least a decent start out of him i think he can get it done and he's actually pitched better on the road a 4.36 era and a 1.09 whip i think that era is a little bit high on the road given that he's only allowed a 207 batting average so look i think ray's gonna come out here do his thing i think he'll pitch decently we've seen the pirates offense i mean just a couple weeks ago people were fading the pirates on their team total under one and a half in the first five 
That's how uh, people were not very proud of this offense. This offense really was stinking up the joint. Obviously, they turn it around a little bit here, but would it surprise anyone if the Pirates' bats just absolutely go ice cold? No. Now let's talk about Rich Hill on the other side, who will start for the Pirates. The 43-year-old, yeah, he's 43-year-olds. We got we got burned by one old pitcher, but Adam Wainwright. Hopefully this one doesn't burn us. But you look at him on the year, been much better than a guy like Wainwright. 4.45 ERA and a 1.4 uh, whip. Look, he's going to have his good starts. He's going to have his bad starts just like anyone else. The Brewers have 62 plate appearances versus him a 24 percent strikeout percentage and only a 204 batting average in those plate appearances you've seen Hill allow three or more earned runs and three straight starts including once to the brewers so i wouldn't be surprised people think oh that's gonna happen again but it's normally not a baseball works logan loves that phrase but you look at him in that game against the brewers only three hits allowed but let him off the hook with six walks look if hill makes this brewers team hit the baseball i think we're in a good spot because brewers Dead last in the MLB, and not only batting average, but OPS versus lefties. Rich Hill is a lefty. And you look at in the two games so far this series, you're seeing the Brewers 7 for 22 with the runners in scoring position. The Pirates are 10 for 24, asking for some regression. We get to the bullpens. Those are both you know very mediocre. Some will have their good starts. Some will have their bad starts. But I think both these two offenses are due some mega regression, and I don't mind the starting pitching today. So I think this one goes pretty under. I'm, I'm happy we got a 9 line. It did open at 8.5. I like it at 9. I don't see it going to 9.5, but if it does, hey, take that. I think that's a really good one, obviously. But that will be my first play. Brewers Pirates under 9. But, Logan, I heard you got a good play for the people. What's it going to be? Yeah, I've got a money line for him, and I think they're actually going to love this pick. Oh, they're going to love this one. (laughs) Yeah, they will. I'm going to the Cardinals versus Yankees game, putting on my contrarian hat, and I'm taking the Cardinals on the money line. Plus 100 odds on Caesars is currently your best value. Now look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use the word to describe what I'm doing here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do it. You've got Garrett Cole in a pick'em with the 34 and 48 Cardinals. <laughs> Yet this this line just sticks out like a sore thumb. Is Yankees money line free as air today? I'd be really surprised if it was because normally on on Sundays and, and Saturdays, even for that matter, the public got killed yesterday on, on Saturday baseball. Normally Sunday isn't a whole lot better because they usually chase their losses from their from Saturday. And you've got Jordan Montgomery today starting for the Cardinals today. 3.52 ERA and a 1.27 whip. I'm not just taking Cardinals because I I just want to blindly fade the public. I want to make that clear, right? I do believe Jordan Montgomery is going to have a good start today because you look at – he's had a really up and down start of the year. Start of the year bad. June, Jordan Montgomery had a 1.71 ERA and a .95 whip in five starts. He really did turn it around. And that's, I think the Jordan Montgomery, the Cardinals signed up for when they made that trade with the Yankees last year, obviously Jordan, Jordan Montgomery has faced the Yankees before. And I remember that game pretty well back in 2022, Montgomery faced the Yankees went five innings, pitched zero and runs. I remember that game because on this same show, I, I picked the Cardinals money line and they ended up winning that game one to nothing. It was an absolute barn burner, but the Cardinals did get it done. Jordan Montgomery pitched well, though, facing facing a very similar Yankees lineup. I mean, it's not the exact same as 2022, but they've got they've got some some guys in there that that have seen him before and that we'll see him again on the season. This Yankees offense only hitting 236 against left handed pitchers. Obviously, Jordan Montgomery is a lefty. He is really good at inducing those ground ball outs. And that's, I think, where the Yankees really struggle. They, they, they struggle against pitchers that are, are just going to make challenge them to hit where the defense isn't. And it's hard to envision this Yankees offense seeing Montgomery well with guys like IKF, Rizzo, and LeMay, who have never even recorded a hit off Montgomery. I've looked at their their, uh, game logs. They've never gotten the hit off of him. So I think Montgomery is actually going to challenge this Yankees offense Keep them below, you know, scoring five, six runs and keep this this game close for for us to have a chance against Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole starts for the Yankees, 2.78 ERA and a 1.13 whip. And Cole's last start, though, he you know, he did allow three earned runs versus the Rangers. Rangers are capable or Rangers are a great offense. Cardinals, not quite the level of, of the Rangers, but they are certainly capable. If you look at Cole's stat cast numbers, his strikeout numbers are great. I'm not going to even try to put Cole's in that game. But if there's a weakness in Garrett Cole's game, I think it's when the hitters actually do square him up. Because in barrel percentage, he's 30th percentile. And in hard hit percentage, he's 36th percentile. So do could we live in a world where these Cardinals hitters are making good contact and getting those extra base hits versus Garrett Cole and not just swinging and missing? Of course, because these are very capable uh, baseball players and they can do it. If you look at the two heavy hitters for, for the Cardinals offense, you obviously got Goldschmidt and Arenado. Those are the ones that come to mind. Goldschmidt does not see Cole very well. He's only hitting 150 against Garrett Cole. But Arenado sits, sees him really well. He's hitting 474 against Garrett Cole. 
I, you know, even, I think those two balance each other out. Even if Goldie is just able to draw a walk, which he sometimes is able to do so, I think Arenado will provide some explosive power to this offense today. Most of the Cardinals hitters have not seen Garrett Cole before, but I trust him to get on base. It's like one of those blindly tr- trusting kind of things. Like, you got to trust me. These Cardinals hitters, you just expect them to swing and a miss. Garrett Cole, 10Ks today. I think they're going to be on base. I think they're going to have the runners in scoring position opportunities against Garrett Cole today. The question, and the question all, all season long for these Cardinals, it's can they get them home? St. Louis hitting 263 at home uh, this season. I know they're a very capable offense at Bush Stadium. That's why I'm saying, like, if you're if you're picking Yankees today, I would be really careful because we've seen the Cardinals in game one of the doubleheader yesterday. They had an out, absolute offensive outburst. Game two, not so much. And that's kind of like the what's been the season, you know, for the, for the Cardinals, they cannot string together multiple good offensive performance. You still look at them on the season of the Cardinals, fifth and runs, sixth and hits at home as well. This is like very capable home offense. If Garrett Cole is, doesn't bring his A game, this is one of those like the Cardinals could ambu- ambush him in, and that wouldn't surprise me at all. Look at bullpen, St. Louis 22nd in bullpen ERA, Yankees first in bullpen ERA. You have got the discrepancy there, and if that discrepancy scares you, go ahead and take the Cardinals on the first five run line. I, I wouldn't hate that, that bet. But I do just I do trust the Cardinals. I trust their bullpen, oddly enough, today. I think the Redbirds get it done for us today, and that's going to be my my first pick. Austin, what do you got for for the second one? Yeah, Logan, I really like it. I know a lot of people won't like that one, but it's Sunday baseball. It's the time for the underdogs, and the Cardinals are about you know the most inconsistent team you'll find. So is the Yankees, a very inconsistent offense. So I'm curious what the final score for that one is because I can see one world where it's like another one to zero type game, or another one where it's like seven to eight or something like that so good luck i think the cardinals get it done now for the final pick logan and i actually really both like this one i'm going to talk about the first half of this one and then logan's going to talk about the second half on the other side but we're going to the scene of the crime yesterday where we had the angels team total over and yeah wouldn't you know we're taking the diamondbacks and angels over eight and a half on the full game which is currently minus 115 on DraftKings. now yes the angels hurt us yesterday only scoring one run it was on a solo blast in like third or fourth inning they really did nothing. Like, they've done nothing this whole series. On the other side, the Diamondbacks didn't really do a whole lot either. So, I wouldn't surprise anyone if the Angels normally, when we run back picks, they normally smack every time. The Angels, hopefully, they come up and bring up the bats, and maybe they can hit this over by themselves. But let's talk about this one, because I don't see the line moving away from eight and a half. But so far, the series, you've seen uh, two days ago, you saw them combine for eight total runs, four of them coming via the Grand Slam. And then yesterday, uh, combined just four total runs. And you got two solid starting pitchers. I'll talk about one of them in a second. Everyone's going to hammer the under. Obviously, the first two games went under. The next one's going to go under two. And then you're going to see a 10 plus run type game because that's how, how, you know, baseball sometimes works. You see the lower ERAs, people take the under. And no, they normally, it's normally when the offense comes. But I want to talk first about these two games so far in the series because you get the Angels in this series batting a big seven for 61. That's 0.114 batting average, 0 for 8 with runners at scoring position. The Diamondbacks aren't doing a whole lot better. 14 for 68, a 205 batting average, and 5 for 17 with runners in scoring position. So you see both these two teams very clearly. The Angels have a good offensive team. I know they're very inconsistent, but you also have a D-backs team that's very good, normally pretty consistent. They just haven't really been doing it. So I think some offensive regressions coming this way, regardless of who's starting out there. We know both these two offenses are capable of hitting any starting pitcher, and I think they can hit these guys. Now, I'm going to talk about the Angels side of the equation. We're going to talk about Reed Detmers, who's going to start for him. He's got a 3.77 ERA and a 1.28 whip. You actually look at Detmers, he's been actually rock solid recently. He allowed one or fewer earned runs and four straight starts. Why am I fading him? Well, prior to this stretch, Detmers allowed two plus earned runs and nine straight Three plus in five of those nine starts and a couple starts in there with four. I mean, Detmers is a guy, if he's not striking you out, he's probably giving up some hard contact. You look at Detmers, eight plus strikeouts and four straight starts. Would it not surprise me if people are on the strikeout over in this one? No, it's sitting at about six and a half or so. But this is a Diamondbacks team. We talked about him, third in MLB and strikeouts per game. So if Detmers, who is 83rd percentile in K percentage, is missing bats, well, he's 35th percentile in hard hit percentage, 20th percentile in average exit velocity, and something also 38th percentile walk percentage. Just a guy with two plus walks in nine of his last 10 starts. So he's putting free base runners out there. And if he's not getting the strikeouts, well, it's going to be some hard hit balls. And this Diamondbacks team has the has the you know firepower to make a guy pay like that that's going to walk some batters and put some guys maybe into scoring position that shouldn't be there. And at the end of the day, Debers, 
overdue for a bad start. Every pitcher is going to have bad starts here and there. They're also going to have some good starts. It's obviously been a great run, but like Logan talks about, you want to be a day ahead of it. And I think this is a day ahead where our start ahead where Detmers is, you know, gets a bad start in there. The D-backs 10th and batting average 19th and OPS versus lefties. They see lefties decently. So at the end of the day, I think we can see this D-backs team put up some runs. I'm not saying they score, you know, 10 runs and hit this over by themselves, but I think they can at least give us some runs. And then Logan, we need some runs from the angels. Who's going to start against them today. Yeah, it's going to be Zach Allen starting for the Diamondbacks today. And yes, he is an ace pitcher, but ace pitchers on Sundays are just something's weird with them. And, and that's why I am fading two aces today. And you know what? You can call me crazy. You can say fade all day long, but I don't really care because I've done this long enough. 3.02 ERA and a 1.09 whip for Zach Allen on the year. Those are good numbers. His swing and miss numbers are great. If you're looking at his stack has numbers, where he has is deficient and where you have to like poke holes in his game, when kind of like Garrett Cole, when it, his hard hit percentage, he's 17th percentile and expected batting average 37th percentile. So when he is getting hit, when the hitters are making contact, it could there could be some damage done, right? Gallon doesn't walk batters, which I think is actually going to benefit this Angels offense because constantly throwing strikes will benefit the Angels offense because they're aggressive. They're always going to be hunting for pitches in the zone. And if you're hunting for pitches in the zone and not really, you know, having to think about them being outside of the zone, that's, I think, how you you ambush Gallon. You look, I'm expecting the Angels to be swinging early and often. I, I, I'm, if they want to watch this and listen to my, my uh, idea for how to attack Allen, go for it, Angels. You got it. You cannot sit back and wait for him to get you into an 0-2 count. That is how Gow Zach Allen dominates. When he's when you he's got you in the 0 and 2. When you've just looked at strike one and strike two, that you're you're done. You're toast because he's he's good enough with the put away pitches to get the swing and the miss there. But I think as Austin was kind of mentioning, this Angels offense they're only hitting 184 at home in their last three games. I, that's that's like do some that screams that it's do some positive regression. You can call us crazy for for trying to be a, one game ahead, but in baseball, that's how you make your money. You don't just go on trends. If you just keep betting on trends, you're you're usually going to be wrong because baseball each game is in a vacuum. If you think about it that way, given the talent on this Angels offense, I I, I don't think you can expect that that number to stay low. I mean, obviously, I don't need to tell you Shohei Otani and Mike Trout play for the Angels, but they do. And if you just want to bet an un, under against talent like that, I mean, go for it. This is still an Angels offense that's seventh best in runs and tenth best in hits. Arizona, if we're talking about bullpen, they're sixteenth in bullpen ERA. I think there will be run opportunities there, and the Angels are eighth in bullpen opportunities. And I think that they will still provide run opportunities for the Diamondbacks offense once Reed Detmers comes out of this game. Austin, I, I think there's a lot of pathways to victory. Again, when you're taking an over eight and a half, I, I've said it before. You need each team to score four, and then you ca cash this bet. I mean, four runs in this day and age of baseball with the steals and and you know band shift, I, I think it's certainly doable. Yeah, and the Logan, like you said, it's it's not. I mean, you get a couple runs up on those starting pitchers, a couple on the bullpen, and we got a good, we got maybe some extra innings. You never know. I mean, game we've seen. I mean, if we were to look back just a couple days ago when we saw that Padres Reds game, you were involved, and they had no runs going through five innings, ended up hitting the regular over at eleven and a half. So nothing's ever out of the realm of possibility until the final scoreboard. It's finally over, and the teams head home. So I like this one. I think it's a good one. I think we also get two other great picks, and hopefully we can get a fifth straight winning day. Hopefully we can bring out the brooms. That would be absolutely electric on a Sunday. But you guys have a great Sunday if you. Want to sign up for Bet365 details, top of the description. Have a great Sunday. We'll see you guys back in tomorrow. Same time, same place on Monday morning. We'll see you guys then.